of true love becomes true crime meet mary murder narrated by helen hunt The TV One News is proudly brought to you by BSP, our bank, our people. Thanks for joining us for another edition of TV1 News. I'm Mary Silla Kelaton. And I'm Rex Litter. I'll join you later in the bulletin with the sporting details. In this edition, calls to increase ceiling of employer contribution, wealth not translating to tangible development, and Pomio welcomes passenger ship number two. The Nest Fund superannuation contribution of 8.5% by employers for their employees is very low and needs to be looked into with the prospect of increasing this rate. Nest Fund CEO Rajiv Sharma raised this concern during the Nest Fund CEO's business breakfast this morning in Port Moresby. The employer component of Nest Fund membership superannuation contribution currently stands at 8.5%, which the Nest Fund CEO, Rajiv Sharma, says is very low. The CEO took the opportunity this morning to address business leaders and executives in the private sector about this and how they can work together to increase the ceiling. As we have seen that superannuation is very low in this country, how do we increase that from 8.5% to the more bigger number as we have seen Fiji has a 40% coverage. Shama said Nesfan has improved its way of doing business by establishing various e-branch online platforms to improve member experiences and includes online balance checks. It's for them to understand what we're doing, again to help us in clearing some of the issues, which there are issues with the member bioreters, uh, if there are issues in to help us to push the digital uh, mediums which we are offering them, we want to, them to encourage their employees to basically adopt to them. And like if contribution needs to be uploaded, so we want their help in telling their HR to basically not to send it through Excel sheets, go and upload it so that it is quicker for all of us. Shama said Nest Fund has improved its way of doing business by establishing various e-branch 
online platforms to improve member experience and includes online balance checks via TextBall, email withdrawal application, and the new Nesfan online help, to name a few. However, Shama added that members need to know the existence of these services and told the breakfast attendees, most of whom occupy executive and management roles, that by informing them, they will ensure the information goes back to the employees. The CEO said departmental ads must make it their responsibility to inform their employees that there are new systems in place for them to utilize. Tracy Pa, TV1 News. About 75 million Kina in Nest Fund contributions is sitting as unallocated funds for Nest Fund members since December 2023, says the Nest Fund Chief Executive Officer, Pardon Chief Officer for Member and Employer Services, and Wilson. Wilson said this is due to unforeseen issues, one of which is membership forms not completed and updated, improper membership listing, and others. Shortly after the CEO business breakfast, NASFAN hosted the 2024 NASFAN Employer Conference today in Fort Mosby. The conference brought together contributors from various businesses in Papua New Guinea. During the first part of the conference, a presentation was made by the NASFAN Chief Officer for Member and Employer Services, Anne Wilson. In a presentation, Wilson announced that about 75 million kina was revealed as unallocated contributions for Nest Fund members since December 2023. Wilson said there are contributing factors to this and one of which is Nest Fund has not received the required schedule or listings to allocate the remitted contributions into individual member account. 75 million kina by end of December 2023, and this is considered very high and is way over the expected target. One has not received the necessary schedule or listing to allocate the contributions into individual member accounts. We had 38 million kina relating to nil schedules by end of December 2023. She said the other issue is that members have their contribution listings uploaded but it is still in the process stage due to account issues, which needs to be resolved by the employers and the employees themselves. In some cases, we, especially those employers who are using the employer portal, the contribution schedule has been uploaded, but it's still in progress. It hasn't gone through completion. So we had in total 14 million kina relating to, um, relating to in-progress schedules. And these receipts are in progress due to account issues, and that needs to be resolved by you employers or HR, or the payroll officer. He said the other issue is that some of the employees have unclarified deposit receipts, which make NESFAN unable to complete their contribution forms while incomplete member detail containing missing date of birth, missing payroll number, and other remain a issue. We have some deposits that have um, vague descriptions and they lead to unknown receipts. So Therefore, Wilson urged members to make it their responsibility to inquire early and find out about their contribution issues because if they do not contribute towards their savings now, it will affect their future. Tracy Pa, TV1 News. The Livestock Development Corporation is in the process of establishing post-entry quarantine facilities around the country. Four sites were chosen for the establishment of these facilities with priority to be given to establishing the first site in Daru. The establishment of a post-entry quarantine facility in Daru will be the shortest route to shipping cattle into PNG from the North Queensland, Australia. Other centers identified from the establishment of PEQs include Ley, Wewak, and the Central Province. The post entry quarantine facilities will monitor all imports and exports of cattle and other livestock species. The government has approved for the setting up of uh, four post entry quarantine facilities around the country. 
One of them is down in Daru. The second one will be here in the central province. The third one up in Lei. And the fourth one will be in uh, Wewek. Uh, the Daru one is, the one in Daru is now going to be set up at a place called Horiomu. According to the map, Oriomo Plateau is near the Torres Strait Islands, approximately 150 kilometers from Oriomo. So we ship the cattle from North Queensland, and they will come straight to uh, Horiomu. We will be working very closely with the National Quarantine uh, Inspection Authority to make sure that the cattle that we are bringing from Australia, they are free of pests and diseases. Coim says these facilities are important for biosecurity. Importing cattle and livestock can be a threat to the PNG biodiversity. Once cattle are checked, they will be monitored in quarantine yards. In the meantime, Coim says LDC is also awaiting the approval of a policy framework from the National Executive Council. The policy is in line with the MTDP4, which was launched last year. LDC is grateful to the current government for addressing the livestock industry's development and progress. Jasmine Jack, TV1 News. Ireland's Petroleum recently commissioned a new 5 million litre fuel tank in Lay to increase its storage capacity. The new Lay tank was operational on Tuesday, March 5th. Chief Executive Officer of Ireland Petroleum Nathan Blewett attributed the successful outcome of the key project to their PNG engineering team. The newly built Lay tank received diesel on the night of Monday, March 4th, as ExxonMobil's tanker delivered additional fuel into Lay. The new tank means IP can serve customers in both Lay and the Highlands region, alleviating the fuel shortage that has been regularly affecting the country. Papua New Guinea has abundant natural resource wealth, but this wealth has not translated into welfare gains for most citizens. This is according to the World Bank's Country Program Evaluation Report released recently. The report highlighted that although resource sector development associated infrastructure spending and high commodity prices have driven growth, the resource sector accounts for a negligible share of employment and has not distributed local welfare benefits. Bank's country program evaluation assesses the bank group's development effectiveness in addressing the three core themes, namely lack of investment in Papua New Guinea's non-extractive sectors and their poor performance, the economic exclusion of women and gender-based violence or GBV issues associated with it, and unmitigated risk of disaster from natural assets and violence and conflict. After the evaluation, the report indicated that systematic gender inequality underinvestment in non-extractive sectors and fragility compounded by vulnerability to disasters caused by natural assets act as barriers to sustainable and inclusive growth in PNG. The report has indicated that there is little investment in non-extractive sectors such as agriculture and no growth in the share of non-agricultural jobs, a key indicator of economic transformation. It further found that growth in PNG is obstructed by an overvaluation of the currency achieved through rationing for an exchange that dampens investment, diminishes productivity, and increases export costs. High levels of insecurity, the inhospitable terrain and poor infrastructure, and low human capital further contribute to the high cost and lack of competitiveness in the non resource sectors. State-owned enterprises were also found to be poor in service delivery and IDEPT has crowded out private sector activity. Evaluations done on the political front indicated that political fragmentation has contributed to intense competition among political elites, political instability and institutional weakness. It was indicated that the vote of no confidence is a major mechanism driving the fragmentation of parliament. As a result, long-term policy making is difficult and the interest of large portions of the population remained unserved.
This creates an environment of weak institutions and weak enforcement of law and order, thus facilitating the proliferation of corruption and rent-seeking behavior. Fredimo, TV1 News. You're watching TV1 News. We'll take a short break and return with more local news. Stay with us. Experience a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. He says the best hunters players come from his region. So does she. But there's one thing that brings everyone together. SB Laga, Bunyam Yumi. The Toyota JD High Ace Bus comes in 14 and 15 seater, high roof luxury model, powered by 2.8 liters JD engine for optimal performance output, fuel efficiency and quietness, designed with improved safety features and easy maneuverability for tire steering angle. The High Ace lift lift suspension and annular frame structure is opted for smooth ride, comfort and safety. Experience the ride on the High Ace Bus and experience the High Ace Pride, the bus that exceeds all expectations. A true champion is measured by their courage, their determination, and their passion to never give up and to always keep trying. With a delicious Milo and Milk taste and added nutrients, Milo and Milk is a great way to fuel our little champions with nourishing energy every day. Because true champions give it their all. Milo, PNG and Mia. Buying PNG made. Mm, right across the nation, we eat snack scratchers. Mmm, Emmy Trubla. All get a young planala pun, only like him snacks crackers. Only make him here, mm. no PNG, one time lay biscuit company. It's crunchy and tasty, it's irresistible. Mm. Extraordinary cold case. We thought we'd go right back to square one. A deeply personal journey. I really want this crime to be investigated. Shirley Shackleton seeks the truth of the Balibo Five murders. Who murdered Greg and the others? And why? Who was there? <laughs> Were governments complicit? The Australian government did have knowledge. Circle of silence. I'll never stop because I don't know how to. Friday, March 29 on ABC Australia. Texting and driving. Hey. Help! Anybody! Ah! Hey! Who were those women? You shouldn't be in there. All the landlines are dead, there's no cell phone signal, and none of us have found a door to get out of here. This will not end well unless we work together. We need to find the exit. Oh! I'm getting out of here. Disquiet. Premier Saturday, March 16th, 9 p.m. on HBO. Thanks for staying with us. Prime Minister James Marape recently launched Pomio District's second vessel, MV Pomio 2, at the district's headquarters at Pal Mal Mal in East New Britain province. Marape was accompanied by East New Britain Governor Michael Marum, Pomio MP Elias Kapavore, and other government leaders. Prime Minister Marape commended Pomio District for implementing the government's Connect PNG program by purchasing vessels to ferry passengers and cargo in the maritime province. Marape made the commendation when launching the district's second vessel, MV Pomio 2, in Pal Mal Mal last Friday, March 8, 2024. He says whatever money allocated to the district and province is being put to good use under the Connect PNG program. To connect its people through sea transport. How can Pomio be left behind? 
Pomia must be connected. Pomia must be educated. Pomia must be economically empowered. Pomia must be housed and, and, uh, and looked after in as far as is concerned. The heart of Prime Minister of Mosby or, or putting me some into it for people sound and need long for me every day. No guys. Remember bring here them sound and need you. The Prime Minister added that this was an example of working in partnership between the national government, districts and their leaders. He urged the people of Pomio to put to good use the vessel by going into agriculture and cultivating cocoa to sell to the markets. You're making work, my blood support of you. And so Pomio district, now East Bringer province, to my partner on this in second seat. They don't know the first for sick. Now to you know working work, okay, people are putting on top eight million go on top. Long initial seat came to two plan on two million going side. I am only calling work partnership. So ensuring that you know that I will get long. Kind blessings for me. The vessel will not only serve the district, but both the New Britain Islands, lay in Morobe, Bougainville, and other maritime provinces. MP for Pomio, Elias Kapavore, thanked Prime Minister Marape for the government's intervention in purchasing the 8 million kina vessel. Prime Minister today, I give him 2 million kina. No subsidize him all free from cocoa, back for you, no steep of Pomio, by the cocoa, 2 million kina. Prime Minister, too, and he committed to 2 million kina straight in America's program. Freddie Mo, TV1 News. Meantime, the Prime Minister has announced that Pomio District will split into two districts in 2027 with Bainin separated from Pomio District. He said this is to ensure equal distribution of basic services from the government. People are cutting pennies by 2027, but get two blood legs right now. All binding by people are stopping it outside of Sinewe. Go sell. Now go on top of burning energy, but you block them up one play electric, but you play it. Now come back to Pomia, you block some electric. You know, you're creating beer one of that. You're making work, you're leading city, you're service delivery. You go close to you block people. The Office of the Public Solicitor opened its new office space in Kokopo, East New Britain province, on Monday, 11th March. The office is now located at the Tamur Santa. Public solicitor of PNG Leslie Benjamin Mamu, when officiating the legal service provided by the public solicitor's office, is independent as it is not a government institution. Four lawyers will be manning the public solicitor's office in Kokopo. Mr. Mamu urged the officers to use the office with caution. Danielle Aloy's appointment as the acting provincial administrator of Medan province has been recognized with the resumption of office yesterday. This comes following weeks of confusion on who the legitimate administrator was after a gazettal notice was circulated on the social media space of the appointment of Danielle Aloy. Yet nothing in black and white to confirm this appointment. Despite this confusion, Mr. Aloy took office yesterday where he thanked all those present to show their solidarity. In outlining his work plans, he promised to overhaul the provincial administration system to bring it back to order. Top on the list of his priorities is to work with the Human Resources Division, look into the acting appointments of staff, including at the management and executive roles, where some have been acting in positions for years. You're going to get under that uh, and, uh, if you ask me, are you just desperate? And just no. I'm pretty dead And you would ask me, why is it that you're here? Uh, there is a decision that was made, and because a decision that had an element of trust attached to it, meaning that. Um, when an entity makes a decision, you know, making decision, past mine and making decision, uh, you've requested a process. Fortunately and unfortunately, the dice fell on me. Mr. Alloy acknowledged that he does not bear a magic wand to solve all administration issues, but assured the staff that they all have to put whatever differences aside and work together. He specifically elaborated on the oath sworn by all public servants 
to serve their respective offices with integrity. Aloy is expected to meet with all divisional heads and executives to get an update on progress of each of their sectors, a compilation of all collective debts, and to discuss on administrative matters and the way forward. Mr. Alloy acknowledges the massive challenges that lay ahead and encourages the public workforce to brace themselves for the changes. Deputy Provincial Administrator Corporate Paul Ito welcomed Mr. Alloy and pledged his support to work with him. Provincial Legal Officer Godwin Haumu called on the public servants to remain loyal to their duties despite a change of the administrator. Now that we have new appointment of the new PA coming in. It gives us the peace and the courage to so we'll try and see how we find our way forward for those. Susan Oriape, TV1 News. On Thursday, March 7th, a French Navy vessel based in New Caledonia, the Patrol Auguste Binibig, anchored at Yule Island in Central Province to carry out a memorial action through the cleaning and restoration of the grave of Lieutenant Leon Bourget. Lieutenant Bourget was a French flying ace in the First World War who died in 1924 on the island where he later became a missionary. A ceremony was held in the presence of Central Province Governor Rufina Pita, French Ambassador Guillaume Lemoy, European Union Ambassador Jacques Fredin, the dignitaries of the island and their community leaders, a crew of the Navy ships, some representatives of the PNGDF and some French nationals. The island's residents also turned out to attend the event. It was not the first time that French officials and militaries paid tribute to the lieutenant on Yule Island. Many military vessels used to stop over there in the past. However, over the past decade, the tradition was lost. This year marks the 100th year of his death on Yule Island. Was a right timing to revive it. The officers and sailors of the Navy vessel were very touched by the warm welcome they received and were proud to have been able to perpetuate this tradition of the French Navy. An information session on Alibaba, one of the world's largest digital marketplaces, was hosted at the Lay Golf Club on Monday morning. The event was attended by businesses, both big and small, who were keen to find out how they could expand their bases and trade with international clients. Representatives from the Lay business community, including those from the small and medium enterprises sector, had the opportunity to hear about the advantages provided to businesses on Alibaba, one of the world's biggest platforms of e-commerce for business to business and business to consumer. The Lay Chamber of Commerce and Industry facilitated the event where Alibaba Group's General Manager for Australia and New Zealand, Pierre Smalders, told attendees that their platform which serves over 1.3 billion consumers and businesses worldwide, connects exporters with business buyers across the globe. It's really important for us that when we are, are coming to a new country, learning about a new country, that we um, take the time to understand it. Um, we, are, we are simply here to try to support businesses uh, and potentially government in objectives to help the economy grow, uh, and to help SMEs, uh, and to support and, and diversify exports. We can offer effectively a window uh, to the world. Um, it's very similar to a trade show. So a company that goes to a, a trade show um, 
does the same thing, except you have to travel to many countries, it's expensive. Uh, and we really provide an opportunity to showcase uh, what Papua New Guinea produces uh, to buyers around the world. Those buyers might be uh, distributors, they might be retailers, they might be manufacturers, uh, they could even be specialty e-commerce sites. So we are really just uh, a, a, a way to connect the amazing products that are already produced here to buyers around the world who may not be aware of uh, the variety, quality, uh, and bounty uh, that's coming out of PNG. Attending the session was a lay resident who had successfully exported taro to the United States in 2023. Using her as an example, Smarter said fundamentally, Alibaba can provide more visibility and connections to more potential buyers around the world. Smaldus also gave the assurance that Alibaba.com is safe as numerous features have been installed to protect users, including trade assurances, secure payment, and buyer verification. Local businesses interested in marketing the products on Alibaba have been encouraged to reach out to the Lay Chamber of Commerce for more information. Camila Guare, TV1 News, Lay. And now the finance news. The Kina closed one point lower at 0.2656 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, Gao Kina was buying 0.2581 US dollars, 0.3875 Australian dollars, 0.2286 Euro, and 37.58 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices, at New York close, gold and coffee closed lower, while all other commodities closed a day higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, ASX closed higher, and all ordinaries closed higher as well. And the market report. We'll have more news after the break. Stay with us. Experience a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking. A smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. Hi, mama. You wait, I'm going to add him special flavor. Put him more flavor, put him more taste. Add the cockroach, get up and big smile on face. Time for him to get a great food. Sip, sip, the boo -boo, yes, Maggie, the taste PNG loves. for a family gathering, a reason to play, a reason to ignite the flame, a reason to cook the best with the best. Flame oil, now PNG made for PNG cooking. Flame oil, winning taste. Hari mulga the rice lovers. Mi plaka three hundred thousand kina scale school money long winim. Sans belong yulo winim one thousand kina. Three hundred per lucky line by winning sale long four plus fortnight. Sans belong yulo win a big plus thread. By one kg he going up twenty kg scale or ori rice. Cut him this last stamp na put him in sale long envelope on the full name na contact details long yu na drop him in sale long entry box long store. Promotion by finish long March 29th, 2024. Hurry up na win big plus one ten scale na ori rice. Be an email plus social media long save more. Terms not condition is tough. He's not just some observer. 
He's an assassin. I don't trust anybody outside of this room. You go rogue, he's been authorized to hunt you down and kill you. That's the job. Which way, Benji? Turn left! Go, 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 go! What are you waiting for? I'm jumping out a window! Mission Impossible Fallout. She wanted to marry the man of her dreams. It's the most brutal murder scene that I've ever experienced. Oh my God, you guys, you killed your wife. True love. You never would have known it was an issue. Turning lethal. One minute you can be in a loving relationship, and the next it's just a nightmare happening. She was laying there dying by the hands of the man that she loved. True love becomes true crime. Meet, marry, murder. Narrated by Helen Hunt. Welcome back. In news overseas, as the Northern Territory's prison population reaches record levels, two former inmates have spoken out about dehumanizing conditions inside NT jails. They say overcrowding, poor hygiene, and a lack of rehab left them feeling like animals, and their concerned inmates are living worse than they when they entered. After spending two and a half years behind bars in the Northern Territory, Chris Dutrim is counting his blessings. So I've been very lucky. Great support network and that's the only thing that has got me through this. The former real estate agent's life came crashing down in 2018 when he was sent to Darwin Correctional Centre for fraud. Now a free man, he's finding it hard to shake off what he saw inside and worries dehumanising conditions are creating far worse criminals. It's meant to be a correction system, what we have, and I believe it's almost exactly the opposite. With the NT election just months away, crime in the Northern Territory is again centre stage. NT prisons are bursting with overcrowding, 1,300 inmates are behind bars in Darwin alone, and almost half that are in Alice Springs. It's hundreds more than the prisons are designed to hold. NT Corrections have not planned for the prison increase of the prison population. At Alice Springs Correctional Centre, where blistering temperatures can exceed 40 degrees, there's no air conditioning and the union fears chronic staff shortages are putting both officers and inmates at risk. James is a former Alice Springs inmate who's asked to keep his identity private. He's had two stints in jail for drug offences and says he was treated worse than an animal. I was complaining about the mouse feces in my wheat bix one morning. You know, and the guard's like, why are you yelling at me? I was quite upset, you know, as you would be eating and mouse. James claims people are leaving prison more broken than when they went in. You don't want to come out a better person. You know, it, it just makes you hate, hate the place and hate everything. NT Correction says it's making improvements across its prisons and says routine pest control and daily hygiene inspections are being carried out. It's reviewing options for cooling the Alice Springs jail and is working to increase capacity at its prisons across the NT, adding more than 250 beds over the past year. Productivity Commission data shows nearly 60% of NT prisoners return to jail within two years of their release, the highest rate in Australia. The Territory also has the lowest rate of prisoners involved in education and training. I love you, bro. Former inmate, now justice advocate, Rocket Bretherton credits prisoner programs for turning her life around. She's worried understaffing within prisons is hurting the people inside. We're there to be re rehabilitated, so let's rehabilitate people, let's do the programs, let's employ more people if that's what needs to be done. She says without shifting focus from punishment to healing, recidivism rates will continue to soar. There should be access to programs for every person in prison. We're there to be rehabilitated. With prisoner numbers on the rise, those who've lived it say nothing but an overhaul will be enough. If we are going to incarcerate someone, 
we have an obligation to deal with them in a certain way so that when we let them out again, they're not more damaged than when they came in. Using one's lived experience to call for change for all. Climate disasters and gender violence are amongst the biggest threats causing poverty in the Pacific and worsening gender inequality, says the Pacific Islands Forum. In a PIF statement at CSW 68 in New York today, Tonga noted while the reg region has made some progress on gender equality, more needs to be done. It, it pointed to the impacts of the global climate crisis and violence against women as two key challenges. The economic inequalities facing Pacific women were also a key challenge shared in the Pacific Islands Forum statement to the plenary session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women. PIF calls for countries to recognize the link between poverty and gender-based violence and the protection of women's human rights. The famous gold stud statues awarded at the Oscars are now being made by a company founded in Queensland. Urban Art Projects has grown into a global enterprise with its own foundry and a large industrial robot at its heart. Urban Arts Projects is a worldwide company founded right here in Brisbane by brothers Matthew and Daniel Tobin. The company helps artists make big ideas a reality. So Owen, this is the main factory here in Brisbane. How many people have you got working here at any one time? Yeah, uh, look, it can range from anywhere from 60 to 80 people, I suppose. We have, um, uh, depending on the projects that are on the floor at any one time, we bring additional people in. UAP is a global business. In Australia, we deliver a lot of work for Australian artists, uh, but similarly, we like to try and take those artists overseas. So it's a KUKA robot, it's a KR90 2700. Uh, we've affectionately named it Marvin, and uh, its primary role is milling. The hand is crucially important, whether it's the artist's hand or our pattern maker's hands and our fabricator's hands in resolving that. But technology has allowed us to extend what's possible. So Smithy, this is the, the foundry. What, what are you guys pouring today? Uh, we're doing a bronze pour today. So as you can see, we've got some castings over here. It varies, you know, we do aluminium and bronze, but it's a good day today because bronze is a nice spectacle to look at. It's nice and bright, and so you'll get some nice pictures today. And yeah. we got to get the cameraman all suited up. Yes. And get some lovely shots. One of the things that we do is we help make work for artists that's beyond the realms of what they're able to do within their studios. You know, some of our work is very, very large. This is the biggest piece of artwork in the factory right now, the Aura Boris. It's by artist Lindy Lee. And today, the guys are putting it together for the very first time. <laughs> How satisfying is it when you, we see it come together, all the work you guys have done? Very satisfying. We have put a lot of work and effort into it, and to see it come together pretty smoothly is, yeah, it's, um, it's all good, man. A lot of the, a lot of the crafts, uh, whilst coming from a traditional trade background, are then refined and finessed because the work that we're doing isn't run-of-the-mill. Very meticulous work. Uh, it is time-consuming, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How much do you love it though? Oh, it's like I said, for mine, I've never ever worked a day in my life. It's always been a hobby. Rescuers have recovered bodies after flash floods and landslides killed at least 26 people and left 11 missing on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. Monsoon rains and rising rivers have submerged nine districts and cities in West Sumatra province since Thursday. A major mudslide caused a river to breach its banks and tear through mountainside villages in Pelsisik Selalan district. Relief efforts have been hampered by power outages, damaged bridges and roads blocked by thick mud and debris. The National Disaster Management Agency said heavy rains caused frequent landslides and flash floods in Indonesia. An archipelago nation of more than 17,000 islands where millions of people live in mountainous areas or near flood plains. 
Sports is next. Stay with us. Beauty is my business, but beauty sure is a tough game. Filters are great, but great skin, better. And that's why my skin deserves the best. So I choose self-care, soaps that gently nourish my skin, resulting in a radiant look made with tropical ingredients. I trust self-care from City Pharmacy. So bring it on. My skin is ready and so am I. Life is about making memories, sharing new adventures. Go beyond the familiar. Don't let bacteria hold you back from experiencing the world. Protex uses natural antibacterial protection with flaxseed oil and eliminates 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Free yourself. Go beyond with Protex. Are you looking to further yourself? ITAC Tivet College offers certificate and diploma courses. For online training, we are given one laptop per student. Application closes 31st March 2024. Apply online now. ITAC Tivet College. Making nobody become somebody. Buy a 40 channel postpaid TV plan now for only 85 kina and get a free 30 day DTV premium plan. That's right, you get to save 100 kina. With your free 30 day DTV premium plan, you can watch NRL, Formula One, tennis, or your favorite Filipino dramas on your phone anywhere, anytime. So, what are you waiting for? Dial 1515 to speak to a TV agent to get your 40 channel postpaid TV plan today. Digicel TV. More channels, more choice, more value. Come on, we got to shake and bake. I'm Buddy Belastro. I will not let you down. And now, he's more than just a boss. Let's go, we got a pack. He's building an empire. Thousands of cakes a day, 75 vending machines. And he's doing it by mixing business. It looks beautiful. With family. My sisters tend to bring a little chaos. Ah, they dropped the cake. Yeah. You're in my world now, Junior. Buddy Velastro's Cake Dynasty. This season, the Bunce family are taking the ultimate risk. There's no investors, there's no third party. We're paying for it ourselves. We have to find some good jade. The stakes are high. Ah! Joshua! And every decision is their own. Time and money is everything. That's how important it is. Hit it! Okay, rush, 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 move, move, move. It's all or nothing. If we don't mine this year, we have no next year. Jade Fever, streaming now on Outdoor. In that moment, my body told me to fight. Now survivors come forward to tell their stories. He was like, get in the car, I said, you're gonna have to shoot me right now. Of fear. It was really terrifying to have someone attack my family. The emotion, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I decided to grab his gun. Panic. He grabbed at my kids, and I was just shaking. And survival. Don't ever give up. Keep fighting, don't stop. I survived a crime. Welcome back. The stage is set for the next two weekends of the second annual Corporate Seven Softball Tournament from the 16th, 17th and 23rd March 2024. 16 teams are expected to register for this year's challenge. So far, 13 teams have been confirmed to battle for this year's top honours including 2022 defending champions PNG Power and runners-up Nest Fund Super. Other corporate teams confirmed are Nest Fund Savers, NCSL, Swire Shipping, Alpha Insurance with three teams, Digital with two teams, U.S. Embassy, Lands Department and Newmont. Three sports are yet to be filled by this week, before the tournament gets underway this weekend at the Bicini Softball Park. PNG Hunters captain and last man standing from the Michael Marums era Ila Alu put on a courageous performance on Saturday leading a new-look PNG Hunters outfit under rookie coach Paul Eiton. 
the Hunters are off to a flying start in their 2024 Host Plus Cup campaign after convincingly outplaying their more fancied winner Manly Seagulls opponents 36 points to 22. Captain Ila spoke proudly of the debutants who performed exceptionally well, which is a positive sign for the team moving into the new season. PNG Hunter's new kid on the block, Clint Lama, couldn't have asked for a better start to his QRL debut with a Man of the Match performance on Saturday. Lama made the occasion even more memorable, scoring a hat-trick that literally blew the star-started winner Manly off the park on Saturday in front of the home crowd. He's held up a meter short of the line. Set restart coming here, barging over. Lama scores on debut. After an intriguing 80 minutes of footy, both hunters coach Paul Ayton and Captain Ila Alu had nothing but praise for the boys, their work ethics and commitment to stay focused and consistent throughout the contest. Of course, special mention to the four debutants, bringing new energy and depth to the side this year, especially centre Lama, who's got a hat-trick. Um, we had a really slow start, to be honest, uh, but um, full credit to the boys, uh, we turned up for each other. Um, back in the dressing shed, we knew it would be a tough battle till the 80, and um, we came back at a strong start in the first half, and um, we got the win at the end, but yeah, um, coach's first win, and um, a lot of things that we could build on going forward throughout the season, it's just one game of Many days to come, and you know the debutants. Uh, we knew what they would be bringing, and, and that's what they did today. Um, you know, one of the debutants had three tries. Um, shows the talent that they uh, that he has and the depth that he could bring for our sides. Um, but yeah, look, um, it's early days. We just have to um, get as much as we can out from this game and um, work on fixing what's need, what's needed to be fixed, and um, yeah, build on from that. But um, yeah, I couldn't be more proud of um, the start that we wanted. While giving credit to the boys for their efforts on Saturday. Skipper Alu also reminded the boys of the challenges ahead. While it's still early days, they need to regroup and get their focus right for next week's game, which will be against traditional QRL rivals Central Queensland Capras this Saturday in Rockhampton, Queensland. Ila said their strong PNG connection with Capras, four local boys are expected to come up against their own countrymen on Saturday, let alone a strong presence of the PNG community in the area. We had a trial match up against them and um, yeah, we could review, sit back and review and see how they went throughout this week um, and then we could build from there. But uh, yeah, look, um, we had a start that we always wanted and that's the um, standard, that we, that's the line that we could build up from here on. We had a trial match up against them and um, yeah, we could review, sit back and review and see how they went throughout this week um, and then we could build from there. But uh, yeah, look, um, we had a start that we always wanted and that's the um, standard, that we, that's the line that we could build up from here on. The captain again commended everyone in the team for playing their role, especially his forward pack, setting the platform for the backs to do their thing and that score tries. Look, we just have to play our part. Everyone else, um, everyone has a, has a role to do and that's all that we asked to do. So, um, full credit to everyone. Terry Longwood, TV1 Sports. Meanwhile, the winner Manly Seagulls captain and crafty playmaker, Bryce Donovan admitted the PNG Hunters were deserved winners on Saturday after his side went down 22 points to 36 in round one of the 2024 Host Plus Cup opener at the Santos National Football Stadium. The captain said the PNG boys handled the condition well and executed better with a good heads up attitude. Donovan said they tied, rather tried to do better in the second half with a bit more direction in their play, which they did in Petrus but was not good enough. We tried to at the start of the game and, um, you know, the back end of the second half there, we let it slip a bit with our, our drop ball and our penalties. We just wanted to cut that out, play a bit more direct, um, and we did that in patches in the second half. Probably when we started dropping the ball, when we went a long time without the ball, um, and then we were just letting the hunters roll pretty much a full field every time they had the ball. It's a long, hard pre-season, so um, we've got a week off next week and hopefully better the week after that. The inaugural boxing tournament is aimed at advancing the landscape of amateur and professional boxing in the country with a visit to foster talent and promote sportsmanship and the code of boxing. Island Boxing also aims at rather uniting the communities, instills discipline and transform lives. President of the Island Boxing Promotion, Harry Miria said this tournament will create a platform where aspiring boxers can hone their skills, compete at the highest level, 
and ultimately make a meaningful impact at the global stage. Gold medalist and defending champions in the King of the Ring Boxing Challenge, Alan Oike, has settled for silver after going down to his opponent, John Deluxe. The King of the Ring Challenge took place over the weekend in Sydney, Australia. This challenge is part of the preparation events leading up to the Olympic qualifier to be staged in Thailand in May. The PNG flyweight champion boxer Alan Oike took the ring in the King of the Ring boxing tournament as a defending champion. He was impressive with his punches and looked great in the ring, but failed to defend the title, settling in for the silver medal. Although this event is crucial for him in terms of preparation heading into the Olympic qualifier set in May in Thailand, his trainer Peter Morrison labeled his fight as another warm-up match for him. Morrison, who trained and prepared Allen for the event, said this is part of the activities to improve the fitness of the fighters as they head into the Olympic qualifier. He noted the tournament was hosted as an avenue for a warm-up and was all about getting some international experience. However, the takeaway in the tournament is that they realize the areas that they need improvement. Morrison said moving forward, they will work on those areas. Meanwhile, Morrison commented on the PNG female fighter Sila Yama, who also won silver medal. He said, it is a great learning experience for her, fighting against a different style of opponent. Both Oike and Yama are looking forward to preparing for the upcoming Kokoda Cup Challenge and ultimately the big one Olympic qualifier in May in Thailand to qualify for the 2024 Paris Olympics. That's all we have in sports. Mary Silla. Thanks, Rex. We'll now have the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Moresby cloudy with some showers, Daru partly cloudy with few showers, Keramaya and Popondeta cloudy with few showers, Alotau cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms. Momase, Lay, partly cloudy with brief showers. Medan, Wewek and Vanimo, partly cloudy with few showers. New Guinea Islands, Loringau and Buka, cloudy with few showers. KVN, Kokopo and Kimbe, partly cloudy with showers. And in the Highlands region, some thunders and possible thunderstorms for all the Highlands provinces. And that ends this edition of TV1 News. Have a pleasant evening. Bye for now. The TV1 News was proudly brought to you by... BSP, our bank, our people.